Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now I've featured this radio on the channel before and this is the FX4CR, but this particular radio has some upgrades. Now this is version three, which has some newly featured upgrades and these are standard and are truly welcomed as they're a massive improvement over previous versions. Now we'll get into those upgrades in a moment, but for those of you that have not seen this radio before, let me just show you what you get. So firstly, you would have noticed this rather nice plastic protective case. And as far as I know, all FX4CR radios from new come with this case. Now you do get a user's manual, but if this is not the latest version of the manual due to changes in firmware, you can still download the manual as a PDF from the official website. Of course, I'll link below. You also get a fused power cable, now, I already took this out of the case before and fitted some Anderson power pole connectors. You don't get these as standard, but they are extremely cheap and easy to fit. The supplied USB cable kind of gives away the first of the upgrades for the V3 model. And yep, V3 now uses a standard USB-C socket on the radio itself, instead of that dangerous 3.5 mm USB socket. Now more about this in a moment. You get a microphone included and a packet of little fuses, which appear to be rated at five amps. And then of course, you get the FX4CR V3 radio itself. Now just to refer back to the included microphone, this is actually a newer style microphone compared to what was shipped with previous versions. Now it definitely feels more expensive and feels more solid than that previous version microphone. Now later in the video, I'll let you hear what the microphone sounds like when transmitting from the FX4CR. Now it is terminated with a 3.5 mm stereo plug and it also includes a ferrite clip-on core, which assumingly stops any RF getting back into the audio chain via that microphone cable. And the main radio looks pretty much the same as previous versions from the front, with all of the function buttons and rotary controls on that same front panel. But if we take a look at the right side of the radio, we start to see some of these upgrades. First, we have that USB-C socket instead of a 3.5 mm USB socket. And below this, we have a cooling fan. Now, while the cooling fan is not exactly new, it is new in terms of being fitted as standard. On previous versions, this was an option to fit after purchasing the radio, meaning you had to fit it yourself. The power socket has also changed to a standard barrel type socket instead of those yellow RC style connectors, which were pretty tough to fit in. I find these barrel sockets are better because they fit snug and stay connected while being used and they're actually easy to remove. So perfect for when you're packing the radio away. Now on the other end, and nope, you're not drunk, it does appear that the silk screening on my radio has had some kind of issue with miss or reprint, making it look a little bit wonky. However, the standard BNC socket for the antenna is still located here, along with the mic socket, extension speaker, and a headphone socket. Now the user's manual does provide a nice detailed chart to refer to if you want to make up your own cables, not just for the mic, speaker and headphones, but also the PTT out and any of the key sockets. Now these rear stick on keyboard risers I fitted myself. Now this come from Amazon and they're pretty cheap. This just means I can place the radio on a desk and have it nicely angled facing towards me. Now under these, there are actually some screw threads in the chassis itself which could be used to attach third party mounts, but I stuck these on before recording those on camera. Now nothing much has really changed in terms of graphical interface compared to previous versions, but for those of you who have not seen this radio before, let me just tell you about the proposed specifications. So firstly, this is an HF radio covering from 3.5 megahertz right up to 50 megahertz, and that's the 80 meter handband right up to the six meter handband. It's multi-mode supporting SSB, that's lower and upper sideband, CW, AM and FM. Now digital modes are also supported when hooked up to a computer running the appropriate software. You can literally use the USB cable as it will provide cat control and an audio in and out interface. Power output is rated between 100 milliwatt with up to 20 watts of RF power output. Now there's no internal battery or internal antenna tuner, so you will need to use your own power source and use resonant antennas 
or at least an external tuner if your antenna is not resonant. Now, personally, I prefer resonant antennas as they're much more efficient. Now, I'll talk a little bit about this later in the video. Delta Lima 9, Oscar Henry Alpha. Delta Lima 9. Delta Lima 9, Ontario, Honolulu, America. Delta Lima 9, Oscar Hotel Alpha 59. And the front facing buttons are backlit, which go off after a few seconds by default, but you can change them to be lit up constantly within the menu. The buttons are kind of weird, they're nice, but weird. There's no affirmative click when you press them, they're like a soft touch button, but you just need to give them a little bit more of a force push. But most of these buttons are dual function. Now what I mean by this is that you press them once and it activates one function, press and hold, and then it activates another function. You can also refer to the manual for more details on this, or you can just press and hold willy nilly and learn as you experiment. The AF control and the tune controls are also push buttons. The AF controls the volume output and when tapped will allow you to change the microphone gain settings. The tune control changes frequency and when tapped it will allow you to change the frequency step size for faster or slower tuning. Now this is definitely useful when you're using SSB. Now while transmitting the output power and current SWR is shown on the middle left of the screen. This helps to ensure the user can see how well the radio is working. Of course, having the waterfall and scope is also super useful to help search for new contacts. After all, this is an SDR transceiver. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero, please again. Yes, it's Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, M0 DQW. Yes, that's correct, 100% QSL. Uh, yeah, Mike, uh, Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey is Delta Kilo 5 Lima November. Now, the FX4CR has lots of little nice features like Noise Blanker DSP, which has adjustable settings, plus it's a really small size radio. Absolutely perfect for POTA, SOTA, or any portable operations. It's also great to have as an emergency backup radio, just in case the zombies attack and the world network goes down. The FX4CR also incorporates Bluetooth, which can be enabled or disabled, and you can use Bluetooth supported applications for operating digital modes from like Android tablets. Now earlier I mentioned that this radio does not have an ATU or battery, so what about the batteries I would recommend? Well, the BioNo batteries are just perfect. These two may be overkill, but if you look on their website, you'll be able to find something smaller, but with enough capacity to power the FX4CR. Now let me know down in the comments which batteries you guys use for portable operations, especially those of you that hike to portable locations where the weight of the battery is extremely important. With regards to the antenna, well, something like an NFED half-wave antenna with a 49 to 1 transformer would get you on the air with a resonant antenna and its multi-band. With just 20 meters of wire, you can get from 40 to 10 meters without a tuner. Obviously, there's many vertical antennas which are available for portable use. Some are very expensive and pretty much overpriced. But then you do get those antennas which come from the Asian market, which work very well and are very cheap or at least very price competitive. I've featured some of these in videos before, so if you're interested in those, go and check them out. This is Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey M0 DQW testing. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing audio on the FX4CR. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey M0 DQW testing. One, two, three, four, five, over. This is M0 DQW and this is what it sounds like with mic gain set to 15 and the compression is also set to 15 on the FX4CR. This is M0 DQW, over. Now I don't think the transmitted audio sounds too bad. And from the contacts that I had, I didn't receive any complaints apart from the first QSO I had. And that was because I had the mic gain set too high. And my transmitted audio was distorted. So that's something you do need to bear in mind. Now I did find that a good level was around 15 to 20 on the mic gain and the same value on the compression value. The mic zero. Mic zero Delta Quebec whiskey. Mic zero DQW five and nine. Yeah, five and nine as well. Thank you. Good luck, Echo Seven whiskey. 
Now within the menu, you can also change the TX filter. In the menu, it's identified as a number, but if you look here at this snippet from the manual, you can see the available TX filter options. Now I think I had mine set to four, which is 2.7 kilohertz. Now this video was more about letting you guys know that the V3 had those new upgrades with the power socket, USB-C socket, and the included internal fan, which incidentally, when it comes on, I could not even hear it over the radio. So if you'd like to see a more in-depth look at the menu, then you can either download the manual or go and watch my previous video on the FX4CR. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, and if you're interested in one of these, then check out the link in the video description. I got this via Banggood, who I believe ordered the radios directly from the manufacturer, and these are not clones, just in case you're wondering. Now personally, I think 20 watts is the sweet spot for small portable HF radios. So the FX4CR ticks that box. Anyway guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.